Hey now, and welcome to the KC Toy Reviews. We are here today with the Immortal Hero by War Story, a.k.a. Spawn, in its, well, dare I say, 1-6 scale glory. And the reason I hesitate and say that, because there is one gigantic mistake with this figure. And well, if you're at all curious what that is, let's go ahead Hold each other's hands tightly and dive right the hell goddamn in. All right, so let's go ahead and start this review out like this. And you might be asking, well, why the hell do we have Spider-Man in shot? And that answer might be very obvious to some of you. And well, because Spider-Man is a 1-6 scale figure and War Story is classifying this spawn also as a 1-6 scale figure. And forgive me for not remembering the uh, maker, but recently we had the Underground King, a.k.a. Kingpin, and that, similar to this spawn, was a massive flop as far as scale. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is from the same company because the packaging was very, very similar. And in recent memory, there are not a lot of companies that are botching the scale as much as these guys are. And again, my God, as he's standing next to Spider-Man, it is incredibly disappointing to see how big this figure is. I am a massive Spawn fan, and the fact that we had a chance to get a 1-6 scale figure was, in my opinion, sheer luck. And the fact that this is what we ended up getting is, well, I hate to say it, rather disappointing. Now, with all that said, there are some incredibly fantastic detailed points to this figure. Almost to the point where my jaw dropped a couple times where I said, wow, that is awesome. However, hammering on that same point, the moment I put Spider-Man and other 1-6 scale figures next to this guy, I was just like, man, what the hell are they smoking over there at War Story? Because either A, they have no idea what the hell a 1-6 scale figure is, or they are smoking something incredibly strong. For them to think this spawn is the size of a goddamn Hulk, which leaves most of the community extremely disappointed in this release. So let's go ahead and take Spider-Man out of the picture and zoom in on some of the great details of this figure, all while putting aside that the scale is completely and absolutely ridiculous. Now, if you already haven't bailed because of the atrocity of the scale of this figure, well, it's time to admire some actually pretty fantastic details. For starters, all the little bullets that you can see on his chest here are actually die cast bullets. You can take out each individual piece. Um, they're pretty great detail on these things. They're die cast. You can actually see the little chambers and stuff on the back there. And the fact that they went to the length of including each individual bullet that you can put into his chest like this and the bandolier is really, really great touch. And I guess next up we have it in shot, as you can hear, the chains, the same thing. These are real chains, so you have some weight to these things. Everything that you can see around him here. Now as we zoom into the ridiculously oversized crotch area, we actually have a metal die-cast buckle on there, which is pretty fantastic quality. Now as far as the belt itself, there's actually a little leather-ish pieces here that connect to this metal piece, and then you have these 3D printed pouches, however they are nicely painted and very nicely detailed. And then the contrast of the nicely painted pouches with the leather belt and the metal buckle all pulls together well and looks like great quality. And then the pouches on the leg here, you can actually move them up and down, so the fact that this is a movable piece was pretty nice in my opinion versus something that's just imprinted there on the leg. And it does hold firm and it does feel like it has a tight grip around that leg. Now as we make our way down to the feet, in my opinion this was probably going to sound ridiculously cheesy, but I always thought this boot, this side, this larger one was always freaking awesome. Something about the wider bottom, the thicker side, the contrast to the two legs. I really always thought that this was an iconic piece to spawn. And I truly mean it. When I took this thing out of the box, my jaw dropped for a second because it does have some fantastic shelf presence to it. The paint application is great. It has some weight. The contrast between the suit material itself and the legs pulls itself together well. But the overall look and feel of it was nice and there was not much to complain about. Now, if anything, the only complaint 
complaint that you're going to have is terrible articulation, none, if anything, on this side. And as far as this side down here, this is a split right here, so you can articulate this foot a little bit. However, the one positive that I would note is because there's no stand included, this foot acts as a nice weight. Now, as far as the suit itself, I mean, it's nothing to necessarily rave about. However, it's also nothing to complain about too much. Um, if we bend it there at the arm, you can see it kind of crunches up a little bit. It's a plasticky, you know, stretchy material suit. And as you can see, there's almost this double layered process of a smooth top layered on top of a textured bottom. However, the overall presence is really, really nice. And you have this kind of latex-ish, almost rubbery white piece that goes down the chest there. And again, overall, I mean, not too many complaints. I think they really did a good job with the suit. The spiked wrist pieces are the same thing. Nice texture to them. Good paint application. Good weight. It only came with two pairs of hands. So we have kind of a fisted one and this kind of clawed one that you can see in the other shots there. Now, before we move on to the accessories, the true star of this show is the cape itself. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is one of the best capes I have ever seen on a one six scale figure and of course we're saying it like that because they absolutely destroyed the scale of this thing had this been appropriately scaled this would have been the best cape we've ever seen on a figure ever and i truly mean this we have wires that are going down every single which way of this cape that let you bend and articulate this thing to ridiculous levels and as far as the size, it is absolutely, truly massive. Now, from this glance, I do need to note that we have a beautiful, leatherish, textured black and red look to this cape. And quality-wise, it looks like this thing's going to hold up. On the other side, it just has a nice cloth feel to it. I am truly blown away by the quality of this cape. And if we are to take scale out of this thing, we are looking at the best cape you've ever seen on a 1-6 scale figure. Now, as far as accessories go, what you see is what you get. We have this fantastic sword, great paint application to it. You can just remove the tip here, slide that in his hand versus kind of bending his hand out of place and getting it in there. So a nice way to get that in his hand there. And as we can see, just a nice textured look, great paint application. The eyes are pretty cool on this thing and the scale, well, similar to the guy is ridiculous. Now, interestingly enough, the gun was in my opinion, ridiculously scaled as well. Um, before we get into that, as we can see, similar, really nice paint application on this thing. Uh, we have kind of cracks, marks, and scuffs all around there. Um, not too much complaint on the way it looks, but check this out. I mean, it's basically the size of Spider-Man. Look at the size of this gun. It's ridiculous how big this gun is. Even in Spawn's hand, it looked ridiculous. So um, cool that we have this, but... I don't know. It looks outrageous, the size of this thing. And then lastly, we have this extra chain here. Um, I have no idea what the hell this thing's for, but you do have an extra tiny little chain to do what the hell you want with it. And of course, taking a look at the headpiece, well, I'll be honest, this is probably the second most disappointing piece of the figure overall, next to the absolutely absurd, disgusting proportion of this thing. And why, might you ask? Well, there's not a whole lot of detail in the headpiece. On top of that, the paint application is slightly mismatched from the black suit. You might not be able to you might not be able to see through camera, but the black is not like a true black. It's almost like a splash of white or gray in it that makes it slightly brighter than the dark black suit itself. And this isn't a huge, huge gripe, but there is a slight mismatch in colors between the black tones. And on top of that, I guess my first thought was, this is just a blown up version of a McFarlane piece. You know, we have all the fantastic detailed 8-inch McFarlane pieces out there. And I would go ahead and say this is not that much more detailed than those pieces. Just scaled different and, of course, on an absurd level. So when we have all these great die cast pieces, a decent suit, great paint applications. And there we have it. The Immortal Hero by War Story in all his glory, a.k.a. Spawn. Now, as I've mentioned a hundred times, well, War Story absolutely botched the scale of this thing. And it's really disappointing because the last War Story figure that I got, and forgive me for destroying the name, it was like the Panther Queen or something along those lines. And it was basically a female version of a Black Panther, and they did a really good job of it. 
good scale. The suit was, well, similar quality to the one in front of us. But most importantly, again, the scale was appropriate. I don't know what the hell these guys were thinking with this figure because Spawn is not this ridiculously big. And of course, if we take scale out of the equation, there is a lot of fantastic quality put into this figure, especially that cape. I am going to drive it in again. This is one of the best capes I've ever seen on a figure. Multiple wires, great quality to it, different textures on each side, and just overall, it is absolutely massive. One of the biggest capes I've ever seen come with a figure. And not just because of the ridiculous scale of this thing, it just has so much texture and so many layers that are folded on top of one another that if you pulled it all out, it's just absolutely massive. And as I mentioned earlier, we have great quality accessories, the chains, the buckle, and just overall great quality accessories. I still think the gun is ridiculously sized even on this guy, but the sword looks cool, great paint application, fantastic details throughout both the gun and the sword itself, and then all the die cast pieces, the bullets, the chains, the belt buckles, and then the little skulls that are holding the cape up top near the neck, as well die cast pieces. If you put this guy solo, maybe on top of your shelf, he has absolutely fantastic shelf presence, and dare I say, maybe one of the best spawn figures on the market. I cannot think of a better spawn figure that you can get and have on your shelf until we start entering the statue department. This is it. Might have a high price tag of around $300, but fantastic quality, fantastic shelf presence. And then the last thing I would probably know, well, articulation is pretty piss poor. The elbows seem single jointed, the legs seem double jointed, but it is something to note. The body underneath feels a little bit jangy and loose in some pieces. So as we start to round this out, I mean, as far as a score on this guy, and that's a difficult one because of the destruction on the scale of this guy, well, we have to take that into the equation, which is going to severely lower this thing. And well, I hate to say it, it's a 5.3 out of 10. I mean, the scale is so absurd that I need to really take that into the equation because as we are suggesting things to people, especially if you are new into the 1-6 scale market, there is absolutely no way I could suggest this thing because it's not 1-6 scale. However, with all that said, take that out of the equation. If you don't care about the scale of this guy, I mean, I very rarely do this, but it could be more of an 8.2 out of 10. 8.3, I'm hovering around those areas because this is fantastic quality and the overall shelf presence is great. If you're a Spawn fan, you would be crazy to pass this guy up unless that scale really pushes you away. So as we start to round this out again at a 5.3 out of 10, can't necessarily suggest it, but Spawn fans, I would be jumping all over this thing because when it is gone, it is gone. So that's going to be it for us here today at KC Toys. We're going to go sign off here today with Al Simmons, a.k.a. Spawn. Fan of this guy since I've been a kid, so very excited to have him on my shelf. However, very disappointed that War Story destroyed the scale. But at the same time, well, thanks for giving me a decent Spawn piece that I can put on my shelf. Catch you guys next time. Al Simmons, Spawn, KC Toy Reviews. Bye!